welcome back to physics through computational thinking today we will talk about uh, periodic motion and dynamics we will review oxidatory motion and periodic motion some of which you are already familiar with so this is going to be a quick review about the same and we will slowly build up on to anharmonic oscillators let's get started let's take some an example of a sim simple harmonic oscillator you are all familiar with the spring and mass system we will take an example of longitudinal oscillations in the spring and mass system. So, consider a system given by this setup. So, we have got a wall over here, another wall on the right side, we have got spring attached to this wall, another spring attached to this wall. Let us take these springs as ideal springs and let us take the natural length of these springs to be equal to A0. Let us say there is a mass m, a block of mass m sitting in the center. And let us assume there is no friction, so this mass can slide back and forth on this, on, the, on this floor smoothly. Next what we do is, we connect the spring with the mass. So we stretch the spring and connect it to the mass and when we do so, the spring's length becomes A. So A0 was its natural, natural length and I have to extend it a little bit so that I can connect it to mass m. At this point, the length of the spring becomes A. Now, as I move the mass to one side, let us say I move it to the right as shown in this picture over here. Let us say it shifts by a distance z, then the length of this spring becomes a minus z and length of this spring becomes a plus z. Now the question is, when I release it what happens? And as you are all familiar, this block is going to execute a oscillation. Question is whether this oscillation is a harmonic oscillation. In order to find that out, we need to work out the equations of motion. So we know that as, as we release the block, this spring is going to push, this spring is going to pull, it will come to the mean position, but at that time, at that time mass has already gained a speed, it will continue to move to the left and this spring will get compressed, so it will start pushing to the right and this spring will get stretched, so it will start pulling to the left, to the right and eventually the mass will stop and come back and will continue to execute that motion. In order to find out whether that motion is actually a simple harmonic oscillation, we need to work out the equations of motion. In order to get the equations of motion, which I have worked out over here, I want to find the acceleration of the mass, I call that, I, I call that z double dot. So mass times z double dot is a force, I need to find what is the total force acting on this mass. The force acting on this mass, let us take this snapshot for example, in this particular picture. The force acting on this mass is because of this spring to the left and because of this spring also to the left. Because of this spring, the force that, in, that is being executed to the, to the left is equal to k times the change in the length of the spring. That is, its current length minus its natural length. So current length of the spring is a plus z minus the natural length that is a naught, force is to the left, so minus and k times is the spring constant. So minus k times a plus z minus a naught. For this other spring, the force is to the left, so that is k times a minus z minus a naught. a minus z is, is its current length minus a naught will be its natural length. So taking a difference of the two gives me the force act because of this spring onto this mass. Now adding the two terms, I get the total force and when I simplify, I simply get mz double dot equal to minus 2kz. A and a naught cancel out, I simply get my mz double dot equal to minus 2kz. I rewrite that equation by dividing by m on both sides, I get z double, double, z double dot equal to minus 2k by m times z. Now this equation is in the form of a simple harmonic oscillator if omega square is 2k over m. So we realize that this system does satisfy equation for a simple harmonic oscillator and its frequency omega square is given by 2k over m or omega square is 2k over m, so omega is square root 2k over m. Now you know when a mass is attached to a perfect spring, an ideal spring, the oxidation frequency is square root 2k by m. In this case there are two springs, so it ended up being two square root of 2k over m. We can also analyze this from the point of view of a potential which is usually easier. If I think about the system for, from the point of view of Newton's laws, thinking about write down, writing down all the forces acting on the masses and the directions, 
you can get confused about the directions and the signs and so on but when you work out the potential it's usually always easier in this case the potential is given by half k times delta x square where delta x is the is the elongation of the spring or the contraction of the spring so in this case a plus z is the length of the spring so a plus z minus a naught is the elongation in the spring squaring that multiplying with one half k gives the potential because of this spring and similarly potential because of this spring is one half k a minus z minus a naught whole square so my net potential turns out to be the sum of the two terms and my equation of motion is simply given by mz dot mz double dot equal to minus d by dz of the potential because force is minus the gradient of the potential therefore mz double mz double dot is minus d by dz of the potential you calculate the derivative of the potential and you will find that you will get the same equation as before so when you simplify this equation you will see that the resultant equation will be that and that is another way of confirming that the system follows simple harmonic oxidation the alternate way by looking at the potential also you can directly determine whether the system follows simple harmonic oxidation or not if the potential is quadratic then the system will follow simple harmonic oxidation and in this case if you want you can go ahead and test check that this potential is quadratic if you expand this out the highest power on z will be z square so therefore we see from this that from this potential that since the potential is quadratic with the coefficient of z square being positive we see that the system is going to follow a simple harmonic oxidation